What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I have a drill that's going to help you improve your aim as well as win more gunfights in Infinite Warfare. Let's get into it. So first, we're going to go over the setup, then I'm going to explain exactly what you have to do during the drill, and then finally, I'm going to let you guys know why I set up everything exactly the way I do, because I often get questioned on this, and everything I do in this drill is done for a reason. Before we get into the setup for the drill, this wouldn't be an aiming video if I didn't mention Control Freaks. The principle behind Control Freaks is they snap onto the existing thumbsticks of your controller without harming the controller in any way, and you can always pop them back off. They clip onto it, which increases the length of your thumbstick, and this increased length will increase the range of motion that you have, which gives you more fine control over your aim. I use Control Freaks literally 100% of the time I'm playing the game. I never take my Control Freaks off because they work. Now this isn't a sponsored video, but I am a Control Freak affiliate. So if you're planning on buying the products, make sure you use the code exclusive, starting with an X at checkout, and that'll give you 10% off. All right guys, so first things first, we're gonna get into a custom game, and we're gonna go into our game setup. For the map, I like to use Precinct. I find Precinct works the best here. You could try it on another map, but this is the one that I would recommend. Mode is going to be free for all, and we're gonna go into the game rules. Now for your time and score limit, you can really set those to whatever you want. So if you just wanna do this drill for like 10 minutes or something, then set this to 10 minutes. I like to just set them to unlimited and then I stop whenever I feel like it. And then I wanna go over to player. Now in the player bar, we wanna have unlimited lives and we wanna set the maximum health to either 150 or double. And this one is basically the key to the drill, but we'll explain exactly why later. I'm gonna go with 150 on this one. And then finally, we're gonna move over to team. Oh, this isn't actually finally, but we're moving over to team and we want the radar to be always on. And then finally, we move on to gameplay. And with gameplay, we wanna make sure we disable payloads, we disable score streaks, and I think that's it. Yes, that is that's everything we do. We just disable those two things, payloads and score streaks. Now we wanna set up bots. I like using 11 bots on precinct. You might have to adjust this based on the map that you're playing, or if you feel like you're getting overrun, you might wanna lower this number a little bit to what works for you. But for me, I use 11 bots and I put those bots on recruit. As for the class that we're gonna use, this is the class that I would recommend using. We've got the NV4. The most important part on the NV4 is the extended mags for the purpose of this drill, and then use whatever you're comfortable with. So whatever you're going to use in a real game. For a lot of people, that's gonna be quick draw, and maybe you're gonna use a reflex. If you use a reflex in a real game, use a reflex in this drill. I personally don't use a reflex on my NV4 in a real game, so I don't pop that on there. Also keep in mind, you could play around with other guns. I just like the NV4 because it eliminates the, the aspect of recoil control. And I don't feel like that's really needed for the purposes of this drill, but we'll explain that a little bit later. As for perks, you definitely want scavenger because you don't want to be running out of ammo at all throughout this. Dexterity is also really helpful just so you can get those quick reloads in. I threw hardwired on there just because it counters a bunch of stuff that the bots could be using against you and you don't want it to break your flow. And finally, tack resist. Again, we don't want our flow broken by bots constantly stunning us or something like that. So I just threw tack resist on there. So that's the setup. Now we can hop into the game and I'll show you guys exactly what you have to do. So once we get into the game, our goal here is to just kill the bots as accurately and as quickly as possible. Now keep in mind, the number one priority while you're killing these bots is going to be accuracy. Number two priority is speed. So never sacrifice accuracy for speed, but you still wanna to try to do this as quickly as possible. So you wanna snap on a target really, really quickly and then try to kill the bot without missing a single shot. Now it is a little bit unrealistic to expect that you're never going to miss a shot throughout this drill. So there is a little bit of play with this, but you do wanna minimize the number of shots that you miss. So with the 150 health that we're using in this particular setup with the NV4, it's going to take five to six shots to kill your enemies. We have a 45 round magazine and therefore we should be able to comfortably kill five to six bots per magazine. And if you can get seven in, then you're an absolute god with accuracy. If you aren't getting at least five kills per magazine, that should tell you that you need to start slowing down a little bit and focus on your accuracy rather than your speed. Once you start getting that accuracy back, then we can work to build up the speed again. Because remember, this is an accuracy drill, not a speed drill, and accuracy always comes first. So that's pretty much it to start it off, but to take this to the next level, if you're starting to get really comfortable with this, we wanna start implementing the movement system into this. We wanna start going for some jump shots. We wanna to try to evade the enemy shots while also shooting them and being on target. This is also great if you just get a scuff controller or if you decide you wanna change up your layout to like a bumper jumper layout. 
or a stick and move layout because these layouts allow you to jump and aim and shoot at the same time. So once you get really comfortable with keeping your boots on the ground and shooting enemies like this, start throwing in some jump shots. Doesn't have to be for every single kill, but start mixing them in there and do the same thing. Like try not to miss a single shot while jump shotting. It makes it quite a bit more difficult, but if you can really master that, you're gonna be unstoppable in multiplayer. Also, I did notice while I was doing this, one of the best areas to do this in is this gas station area on Precinct. Reason for this is there's just lots of spawns around you and there's almost always going to be a target to shoot at and you're constantly having to turn your aim and snap onto your targets. Now one other change that could be made to this drill that just might work for you is when you're doing the drill, disable your target assist, but then when you get back into multiplayer, turn your target assist back on. Principle behind this is if you can get really good at hitting shots without target assist and then you get into multiplayer and turn it back on, it just becomes that much easier to hit your shots once you have target assist. Now for me personally, I still leave target assist enabled in game. I feel like it's best to practice with the tools that you play with, and I feel like using target assist during this drill allows you to get a feel for how target assist is going to behave in an actual match, and you can use that to your advantage. I want my gunfights, at least on my end, to feel exactly the same in these custom games as they will in multiplayer, and if you're disabling target assist, you suddenly have something that's different between the two. And I would prefer the gunfights, at least on my end, to feel the same in my drill as in my multiplayer matches. So if you want, try it out. Try disabling that target assist in the drill and then re-enable it in multiplayer. For a lot of people, that definitely works, but that's not what I personally do. As for your sensitivity settings, I'm going to be doing a full video on this, so make sure you stay subscribed to the channel so that you can keep up to date with all that kind of stuff. But I will be doing a full video on sensitivity and choosing the right sensitivity for you. And that's basically all I'm going to tell you about sensitivity in this video, is use what feels comfortable for you. Don't just use what the pros use, don't just use what I use, use what works for you. So that's pretty much it, that's all you have to do with this drill. It's all about repetition and building up that speed and momentum while maintaining the accuracy. If you do this, quick and accurate gunfights will become muscle memory and it's just going to happen on its own in a real game. This drill is also excellent for just warming up, so maybe you're already pretty confident with your aim and you don't feel like you need an aiming drill. If you've taken a couple days away from the game, for instance, and you come back, a lot of times you notice everything feels a little bit weird because it's just, it's been a while since you've had the controller in your hand. This drill is great for getting your head back in the game and making sure that when you hop into your first multiplayer match of the day, everything's going to be nice and solid. Now, one of the biggest questions I usually get on my drills is how often should I do this drill if I want to improve my aim? And my answer to that is the more you do it, the more your aim is going to improve. It's as simple as that. So try to do it as much as possible, especially if you're still finding that your accuracy isn't as good as you want it to be. Keep doing it. Every single time you log on, if you really want to improve your aim, every time you log on before you get into a game, do this drill for about 10 minutes or so. It takes about the same amount of time as an average game would take, yet you're going to see a lot more improvement out of this drill rather than just playing a regular multiplayer match because you're really honing in on one specific skill and you get a lot more repetition and a whole lot more gunfights as well than what you would get in a regular multiplayer match. All right, so now it's time to preemptively answer a bunch of questions that I know I'm gonna get because I've done these drills in the past and I always get the same questions. The first one is, why do we increase the health of the bots? And the simple answer for this is if you can consistently hit five to six shots in a custom game against a bot, once you actually get into a regular match with regular health settings, it becomes a lot easier to just hit four shots in a row because four shots in a row is a lot easier to hit than five to six consecutively. The next big question is why are we using recruit bots? Wouldn't you want bots that are more difficult so that it really challenges you? The answer to that one is no. These bots are simply targets. That's all they're designed to be in this drill. We don't want our rhythm to be destroyed by bots that are too good. If we wanted to play against difficult things, we could just play multiplayer. These are just targets to shoot at so we can build up that momentum and that rhythm and we can build up our muscle memory as fast as possible. So don't worry about setting them to a harder difficulty setting. We don't want that. They're just targets. Next up, why do I turn the radar setting to always on? The reason for this is we really want to focus on the aspect of accuracy and speed. We don't want to worry about trying to predict spawns and find out where enemies are. Like I said, they're just targets to shoot at anyways. So we just want to be able to find our targets as quickly as possible so we can build up that rhythm quickly and maximize the repetition in this drill. The final question I'm going to answer here is why the NV4 and can we use a different gun if we want for this drill? So the reason I chose the NV4, there's actually two reasons for it. First off, it's very consistent. It's always going to kill in five to six shots with this drill. 
Whereas if you use one of the SMGs, it could range anywhere from like four to eight or nine shots, and there's no real consistency there. So that's why I'd recommend at least using an assault rifle, because the assault rifles tend to be pretty consistent that way. But why the NV4 specifically out of the assault rifles? This is because the NV4 has very little recoil. And I kind of like eliminating recoil from the picture in this particular drill, because that means when you're missing shots, you know it's because you are missing shots. You can't really blame it on recoil, you can't write it off as, oh that was some random recoil that happened there. If you're missing, it's because you're missing. Now there is something to be said for being able to control recoil, and if you want to play with a different assault rifle that has different recoil characteristics, feel free to do that. Just keep in mind you might have to adjust the number of kills that you can get per magazine. So there we have it, that's going to wrap it up for today's aiming drill. Give it a go, do this several times, and I can almost guarantee that you'll see improvement. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.